What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I The first thing I got to say to you guys is a lot has happened in the last 24 hours. Er, yesterday, we reported on Pat's Path Predictor that there was a shift in the models going further and further to the west. Well, that trend, ladies and gentlemen, I now say trend because a shift is a one-time thing, but it kept going further and further to the west, and now the trend has continued, and now some of the models are calling for this thing to now enter the Caribbean Sea. We'll get to that in just a second, but before we do, we need to go ahead and show you what the NHC is now putting out at this current point. Here's the situation east of the Windward Islands. Showers and thunderstorms associated with a broad area of low pressure located about 850 miles east of the Windward Islands continue to show organization. However, it is not clear yet if the system has a well-defined surface circulation. Environmental conditions are expected to remain conducive for additional development. A tro tropical depression is, quote, likely to form during the next day or so while the system moves westward to west northwestward across the tr western tropical atlantic towards the lesser antilles interests in the lesser antilles should monitor the progress of the system and watches may be required for some of the islands later today for more information including storm warnings can be found at the high seas forecast issued by the national weather service regardless of development this system has the potential to bring gusty winds heavy rainfall and flooding to portions of the lesser antilles beginning friday so ladies and gentlemen this thing is approaching the lesser antilles as of right now this looks like it's gonna it's getting increasingly likely that somewhere along the lesser antilles is going to get hit by this thing when this thing develops so here's the formation chance in the next 48 hours it is at 80 percent same formation chance 80% in the next seven days as well so this thing is incredibly likely to organize and develop I'd say in the, in the next day or so at this current point and it has the conditions to do it now we're going to go ahead and show you the track models to kind of give you a gauge of what I'm talking about at this current time right now the majority of the models either have this thing a impacting somewhere along the lesser Antilles Anywhere from Barba any from Barba where from Barbados over here all the way to the U.S. Virgin Islands, or B, it moves it, or B it moves through the uh, through the Windward Islands and then enters the Caribbean Sea and brings potential Im impact to Puerto Rico and other Greater Antilles such as Hispaniola and Cuba. So that's the situation we have right here. This is continuing to be a very big and evolving situation at this current point. Intensity models at this current point, if we could go ahead and pull those up. Intensity models are pretty interesting. Majority of the models keep this thing as either a tropical storm or category one hurricane at this current time. However, I've been looking at the conditions and they are continuing to get better and better and better for good organization, good development, and good strengthening. We'll get to those in just a sec, uh, those conditions in just a second. But I wanted to go ahead and give you a better understanding of what we're potentially looking at as of right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is about to be a very big situation that we're going to continue to cover here on the channel. But before we get into that, we're as we get into this active weather period, be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting catered to your local area. For more information, be sure to use the code PREDICTOR in the link in the description down below for 50% off your first month. And check them out in the link in the description down below. I highly recommend it. I've been using their source, uh, services. It's been really good. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get to the conditions as of right now. Here's the, uh, the si situation we have right now. Global sea temperatures, for if, and th these new model tracks are actually pretty interesting because according to some of these new tracks, if they hold, this could potentially put this into the 30 plus degree Celsius waters or 86 plus degree Fahrenheit waters because as of right now, it's in around like an area of like 28, 29, 30 degrees Celsius, around 82 to 86 degree Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States and Puerto Rico. And as this th as time continues to go on, if it continues to push further to the west, it could enter an area right over here around 30 degrees Celsius. And even if it enters the Caribbean, there's going to be a lot of, of very, very warm water and also very, very thick warm water, especially with the ocean heat content to keep in mind. OHC, where this thing is right now, it's in an area of around 75 to 100 OHC. So it definitely can take full advantage of that and organize and develop potentially as, uh, as early as tonight from what I've been seeing. 
So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to progress. But as it approaches the Lesser Antilles, it's going to be entering an area of 125, then up to 150, maybe 170 OHC in some of these areas over here. For those of you who do not know how much fuel that is, let's say 100 OHC is rapid intensification, which is as specified as a one millibar drop in the low pressure system per hour or 35 miles per hour in, uh, in intensification of wind speed. In 24 hours, two mil, uh, uh, 150 uh, uh, OHC is around explosive intensification is around two millibars per hour of a pressure drop, and wind speeds maybe around 50 to 60 miles per hour in tw uh, in 24 hours. We'll have to see how, uh, if it get, oh, gets down that low because explosive intensification isn't exactly in uh, specified when it comes to wind speed, but it is specified when it comes to pressure drop. So it's we're gonna have it's kind of one of those things we're we're gonna have to kind of cross that bridge when we get there. Anything more than that, yeah, that's rocket fuel for this thing, and that's why I'm so concerned about it as it's entering this area of OHC and this area of warm water. But you're probably looking at this and you're probably wondering, Patrick, there's these aren't just the two factors you're looking uh, you're looking at. All these other channels are hyping this up uh, this up like it's gonna be one big thing. What are the other conditions that we're missing right here? The other condition that we may be missing here is the wind shear. But based off of what I'm looking at right now, the wind shear is relatively weak all, all the way to the Lesser Antilles. There's an area of like maybe 15 to 20 knots of wind shear that may impact it in the, in the short term. But overall, it's not going to do that much to it. As time continues to go on, there also may have uh, there also was a potential for dry air, but convection really has been organizing and really fired up near the center of circulation with this so that dry air is probably not going to affect it anytime soon at this current point in time so that's the situation we have with all the conditions ladies and gentlemen now we're going to go ahead and show you some operational models and then get to the hurricane models because you guys want this is the juicy stuff you guys are probably clicked on this video to listen to so here's the juicy stuff the european has this thing organizing and developing and pushing further to the west than than it did in the past. Although the European has this remaining a weak system at this current point, it then approaches Puerto Rico, and then it kind of drifts out to sea as a weak tropical depression or, or something along those lines right there. I, In my opinion, I feel like the Europeans being too conservative with this because we're already at an 80% chance of formation in the next 48 hours, number one. And number two, we already talked about the conditions and the conditions do not exactly precipitate something that weak unless the storm gets in its own way or there's some dry air intruding it. So that's what we have with the European. Next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the GFS model. GFS has been pretty interesting to say at the very least. The GFS has one, been one of those models that is really quick on the draw, as I say. And what I mean by quick, quick on the draw, it really organizes and intensifies fast. And the GFS has been pretty interesting. The GFS is still a little bit further to the east that, uh, than, it, uh, than to the Antilles in the majority of the models. But that trend is still there where it's shifting closer and closer and closer to the Antilles as the days continue to go on. But either way, the GFS is calling for a Category 2 hurricane to bring some sort of impact to the northern Leeward Islands before moving out to sea, and that's pretty much the last we'll hear of that when it comes to land impacts, according to the GFS at this current time. So, well, next thing we're going to go ahead and show you this is the CMC, and the CMC has been one of the more consistent models that I've noticed. It's been consistent about a potential impact with the Antilles, consistent about potentially entering the Gulf, uh, not the Gulf of Mexico, but the Caribbean Sea, and potentially impacting Puerto Rico. So we'll go ahead and show you that run as of right now. Here's the Zero Z CMC. CMC has this thing making landfall as a strong tropical storm, and then strengthening up uh, potentially into a Category One hurricane as it's impacting the Leeward Islands before pushing out to sea as a Category 1 hurricane, mid-range Cat 1, according to the CMC right here. And it's been one of those more consistent mod uh, models that's been calling for at least this kind of track. The intensity, we're going to have to wait and see when it gets there because... Intensity is very, uh, very unpredictable to forecast, especially in conditions such as good as these. And if we go ahead and show you the 12Z model, 12Z CMC actually shifts this a little bit further to the west into the Caribbean Sea as a weaker system than than before. But uh, but either way, it's going to be an interesting situation to see how that plays out because if we go ahead and show you the track models, it kind of aligns with the HFSB, the HFSI, and the HMON models over here, where it potentially impacts Puerto Rico. So that's what we have really going on 
at this current point with the CMC. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the NavGem model. NavGem model has been kind of one of those other quick draw uh, models that I've noticed where it basically intensifies at a very early time. So here's the, uh, the NavGem. It's actually a little bit slower uh, to uh, organize and develop, but it still uh, approaches the Leeward Islands as a strong tropical storm and Category 1 hurricane as it continues to bring lots and lots of impacts, potentially towards uh, the least, Lesser Antilles, towards the Virgin Islands, potentially towards Puerto Rico if it gets large enough. But it's expected, according to the model, remaining a Category 1, maybe making a run for a low-end Category 2 out to sea before dissipating and, mer and merging with another trough system as it approaches uh, the other part of the Atlantic Ocean over here. Last model we're going to go ahead and show you is the Icon model. And the Icon has been pretty interesting. It's been also another one of those more consistent models, similar to the, uh, that the, of the CMC. And the Icon is showing organization and development. However, it is a little bit weaker than uh, what the other models are anticipating as of right now. They're not even registering this as a low-pressure system right now on the, uh, the thing, which, again, to be honest with you guys, that's a bit too conservative because we're already at an 80% chance of development at this current point and this thing is already looking on satellite like it's organizing by the hour so it's definitely something to take keep in mind but satellite really satellite imagery and now casting is telling me that uh, that something else is going on so that's what we have with the icon at this current point now we're going to go ahead and get to the really juicy stuff for the last uh, few minutes of this video and get to the hurricane models we're going to start with the h mon then do the halves a and b models and then the h wharf and then kind of neatly wrap this up in a nice little bow, so that way you got uh, that way you guys understand what's going on. Let's go ahead and you start with the H mon as right here we have the main sea level pressure winds at this current point. The H mon actually has this thing potentially becoming a tropical storm in the next nine hours or so at this current point, showing signs of organization development. And it's a little bit slow to start at first, but as it's approaching the Lesser Antilles. It's a, yeah, as it approaches the Lesser Antilles, it does show it's continuing more signs of some potential strengthening to happen. However, the eight, this, okay, never mind. This HMON model run is, is really weird right here. This is the 6Z HMON run. So we're going to see how much of the 12Z is out just to give you an understanding. About 75 hours out. So we'll go ahead and use that. Uh, because it's close enough to the uh, to the islands just to give us a gauge of what may be happening and what's going to be happening showing signs of organization development potentially impact uh, potentially impacting the uh, the windward islands as a strong tropical storm before moving through the caribbean sea at that current point so we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to progress uh, as of right here, next thing we're showing you is the halves A model. Halves A, if we go ahead and pull this up, right there, about seven. It the, runs about seventy-eight hours out, so we'll definitely use this for the sake of this exercise, just uh, so that way, uh, so that way, because it's close enough to the Antilles, to kind of give us a better gauge of what's going on. And the halves A is showing a potentially stronger system. Okay, no, never mind. This uh, this run is really is kind of finicky as of right here. The halves A is just. Uh, shows signs of organization development strengthens into uh, strengthens potentially into a strong tropical storm as it's approaching the Antilles as of right now. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. These mile runs have been pretty finicky uh, looking at them, so we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and skip that. Check the H wharf, see what's going on with that. The H wharf will use the 6Z model as of right here. The H wharf is showing signs of organization development and then strengthening at a very robust pace down to a 990 bar, 9 1000 millibar system as it's approaching the lesser Antilles yeah never mind okay all these model runs are pretty finicky right here so we'll have to keep you updated on everything that's going on but we'll close the video out right here and if any more information comes out we'll keep you updated we'll let you know what's going on if you, be sure to follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram that's where, where the, uh, the new updates will be but with that being said be sure to hit the subscribe button and stay safe